It's another edition of Visual X doing our master classes. For you, both grade 11 and grade 12. Even grade 10 will benefit from these sessions because compound interest starts from grade 10. Let's look at how they set it in November 2010. It was question 7. Remember the first part of a question is usually about the compound interest or the simple interest. 99,9% .9 it will be compound interest. The next one will be annuities, whether it's future value or present value. At what annual percentage interest rate, compounded quarterly, should the lump sum be invested in order for it to double in six years time? At times you read a question and you will not understand it. Don't panic. Read it again with understanding. That's why your comprehension skills comes in. At what annual percentage interest rate, compounded quarterly, or I know what you're looking for, we're looking for I. At what annual percentage interest rate, compounded quarterly, should a lump sum be invested in order for it to double in six years time? At what annual percentage interest rate, we know that we're looking for interest rate, compounded quarterly, this becomes important. Remember that my N, I multiply by four, my I, I divide by four. That's what quarterly means. Should a lump sum be invested? Do I know that lump sum? No, we don't have the value of that lump sum. In order for it to double, we know that, but that lump sum will double. When? In six years. I have to, I do pick up N there. Let us collect our data. At what annual percentage interest rate? So I'm looking for I. It is I over 100. I know that my I is I over 100. I check how was it compounded. At what annual percentage interest rate compounded quarterly? So I divide my I by 4, so it will be 4 and 100. It will give me 400. So it's going to be I over 400. Remember, if I divide I by 4, I must multiply N by 4. Whenever I've got my N, I put that at the back of my mind. Compounded quarter. Should a lump sum, what is a lump sum that you are depositing? It is P. Do I know the value of P? Hmm? We can't pick up the value of P. Let's call it X. We don't know the value of P. In order for it to double, after a certain period, after six years, I've got my A to be doubled to the value of P. So if my P is X, what is A? If it is doubling, it will be 2X. Right? When? In order for it to double in six years, collecting the data is the most crucial step in solving the problems of the mess of finance. So make sure that you collect your data, you collect your data correctly. In order for it to double in six years time, I pick up N there, so my N is six. Remember this was compounded quarterly, it was compounded quarterly. So if I divide N, if I divide I by 4, I've got to multiply my N by 4 as well. Because these two has got a special relationship, I and N. What is 6 times 4? 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. So this will be 24. Yes, I've collected my data. I go straight into solving the problem. Now, I'm checking my P and A. Is P smaller than A? If it is smaller than A, it's plus. But if P is bigger than A, it will be minus in between. So let's write our formula. So this is compound increase. It was X, now it is 2X. So A is equal to P into 1 plus I raised to the power N. I can't go and think of a future value or present value because there are no regular payments here. If you read my statements, there is nothing that is paid every month. It was just a lump sum that was deposited. Right, let's, let's substitute. Substitution. Do I have A? Then I look at my data that I've collected. The key in mastering this section, make sure that you collect your data. It makes life easier. It takes some time, but you'll move faster after that. What is A? A in this particular case, it is 2x. I've captured A, which is 2x, is equals to. What is P? P in this case is x. I've collected, I've, I've, I've dealt with that. 1 plus, what is I? My I is I over 400. I over 400 raised to the power n. What is n? It was 6 times 4. It was 24. Ah. That's what I have. I'm still confused. I see two unknowns now. Then I have a problem. But I don't panic. I move on. I know that after this section, it's just algebra to get into I. This is my main one. I want to get I. 
at what annual percentage interest rate. That's what we're looking for, I. Right. If I've got it, if I want to isolate that I, what is the first thing to remove here? I've got to divide both sides by X. If I divide this by X, that X will go with that X. If I divide this by X, the X will go with this X. I'll be left with 2. So in this particular case, this if I divide by X, this goes. I'm left with X with 2 in the side. 2. Because if you've got 2X divided by X, goes there once, then I'll be left with 2. This is where this 2 comes from. Let's move on. Now, this X is gone, this X is gone. This is what I have. What is the next thing to remove? It is that power 24. How do I remove it? Remember, it's the same thing as we have done this side. How did you remove that 18? We set 18 through to both sides. It's exactly the same thing this side. This one is gone. This is what I'm left with. How do I get rid of this power 24? I put the 24th root on both sides. So I've put the 24th root here. Ah, so that is gone. So this is gone. This is gone. This is what we have, the one in brackets now. What is the next thing to remove in this particular case? It is one. Transpose it the other side. It will be minus one again. Now I'm left with I over 400. How, how do I get rid of this 400? I multiply it by 400 on both sides. What am I left with this side? Yes, I've managed to isolate my I. Then the next step is just the calculator work. Let's quickly do it. I've got 400 into uh, root. Uh, I think I need to go that down. Uh, root, uh, this is 24th root. Uh, yes, 24. I go inside, I've got 2, I go out, I've got minus 1, I close the bracket, I push my equal sign, it's 11,72. So therefore, my i in this particular uh, problem, it is 11,72. Right, this is how you go about doing the compound interest. The next part that I want us to do are the annuities, where they are regular payments. In the first part that we're doing, it was just a simple deposit, once-off deposit. If it is once-off deposit, I check whether it's simple interest or compound interest. Most cases, it will be compound interest. When I go into an exam, I expect the examiners to either ask me about I or to ask me about N. And if they ask me about N, definitely, because N is the exponent, I'm going to involve logarithms in that particular problem. Thank you.